John, chapter number one. First John, chapter number one. When you get there, say amen. says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness how many of y'all have heard this verse amen, amen. most amen. of us amen. if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness let's pray heavenly father we love you tonight Thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity we have to be in your house. Pray, God, that you'd help us. Pray, God, that you'd lead, guide, direct. Pray, God, that you'd have your perfect will and way in all that's done here tonight. I pray, God, that you'd meet with us. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd breathe on us. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd take your word and, and let it find a resting place in each heart that's here tonight. And Lord, I pray, God, once again, you touch our pastor as he's at home. Heal his body. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help him. Lord, we ask you in these things. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First John chapter number 1, verse number 9, I believe, is one of the most important verses in the Bible. Amen. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. How many of you are tonight are thankful for the fact that we can go and confess our sins to a father, and listen, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us of those sins. Amen. Amen. Listen, how many of you tonight believe in your heart, if you'd be honest tonight, how many of you believe, uh, would, would agree with me and say that your sins ain't worth forgiving? Amen. Amen. How you like that English? <laughs> they ain't worth forgiving. Amen. Listen, they, listen, your sins are vile, they're wicked. Amen. No matter how little you think they are, how big you think they are, hey, they all they all nail Jesus Christ to the cross. And listen, the fact that a, a thrice holy God, Amen, would forgive, would find it within Himself to forgive you of your sins. And Bible says He's faithful to forgive us of our sin. Yeah. Hey, a God that we can go to time after time after time after time that we mess up and we make mistakes every yeah. single day. Hey, and we sin every single day. If you'd be honest with right. yourself tonight, yeah. hey, we're not we're not perfect. The Bible tells us that we're not in that just uh, that that glorified body yet. Hey, we're still in the flesh. Hey, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to sin every single day. Yeah. But the Bible tells us, Hallelujah! Hey, that He's faithful and just to forgive us if we confess our Amen. sins. So, you know, we know the importance of this verse. We know how important and how crucial it is for us to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and how, how important it is. And how, listen, how, how, how important it is for us to be able to go to God and talk to Him and be able to have a relationship with Him and not just serve Him in a religious capacity, but also have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. How important it is for us to know this verse and live by this verse. Man, it's so, so very important important to us. Amen. It's something we ought to do every single day. We know the importance of the verse. But I want to talk about the importance of one word. And that's the word confess. Because the rest of it really don't have anything else to do with us. It's outside of our power. The rest is God. Right? The rest is on Him to be faithful and just. But that part where it tells us to confess, now that all, that's all in our lap. There ain't nothing, there's nothing, listen, you're not going to have that faithful and just forgiveness part unless you, you do that confessing part. Amen. 
And that confessing part means everything, Brother Joe. Yeah. That confess part don't just mean let me talk to him about the little things and let me just keep them big things stored away at where nobody else talks about it. Nobody wants to nobody wants to acknowledge it. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's those big things hiding away in your closet. Amen. We've all got them. Listen, we've all got that one thing that's lingering and lurking inside of our closet. We know what it is tonight. You're thinking about it right now. Hey, listen, until we get to the point where we can really confess that to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to find that forgiveness and that just that faithfulness. We've got it. You've got it. But we've got to confess it every day. Paul said, I die daily. We've got to die every single day to our sin. The thoughts that we think, listen, the vulgarness that wants to come out of our mouth, the wickedness that's inside of our hearts, listen, we've got to confess it to Him. Oh, we, you know, we say, well, you know, I'll, I'll never get ahead, man. I, I feel like every single time I confess my sins, I feel like every single time I do, I, I try to get back on the right track. Man, it, it don't take no time. It's another week or two. I'm right back down again. That's because we're trying to do, a, do it a week at a time. Yeah. Don't we? Amen. Man, we, we'll get right with God. We'll, man, we'll go to team camp. We'll have revival meetings. And then, man, we will, man, it's, and then we're like, oh, man, I, I did good for about six months. And then I, I dropped out of my Bible reading. I dropped out of my prayer life. Well, it's because you're trying to do it a month at a time. Come on, bro. A year. Listen, it takes every, for me, you might be different. It takes every single day for me. Amen. Sometimes every hour every minute sometimes I'll be at work that's the worst place to try to live right in jail. I'll be at work everything be good you know I get a little minute I'll read something a little scripture something think about something pray about something then an inmate just knows exactly what to say. <laughs> Bless their all. And then I've got to go pray. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just stand by. I'll be back. <laughs> Let me go pray. But that confess part. Let me get Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. This is where now for the longest time I thought the word confess meant to tell the Lord my sin. Right. Does that make sense? We think, all right, well, I'm going to confess my sin. I'm going to make a confession. I'm going to go to the Lord. I'm going to say, Lord, this is what I've done wrong. But if you look at Webster's 1828 dictionary, that's not what confess means. Confess means to own up to, to claim. To say, Lord, this is what I've done. This is who I am. That's different. Because in, Gen in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, And the Lord God called unto Abraham and said unto him, Where art thou? Do we not believe that God probably knew where Abraham was, or Adam was? Yeah. Yeah. He knew exactly where he was. Adam, where are you? Adam has sinned. Right? He's already sinned. He knows now that he doesn't have any clothes on. He's wanting Adam to confess to him where he is spiritually. God already knows where you are. Amen. Newsflash. God already knows what you've done. God already knows the sins that you've committed. Unfortunately, we, when, we, when we get born again and we get saved, listen, uh, uh, 
Man, we've got Him living on the inside of us. He's a part of us, man. Hey, we're, we are one with Christ. But unfortunately, when we, when we decide to sin, man, we take Him down the road with us. Yeah. When we're so selfish to think, oh, I can just get away with it, I can hide it, man, I can do I can I can delete it, I can delete it, I can delete it, I can hide it in the cabinet, I can hide it under the seat of my truck, I can delete it off of my phone. Now she'll never see these text messages, she'll never see these websites, he'll never be able to know that I'm talking to this man, he'll never see the phone calls. Listen to me. Hey, unfortunately, we've already God has already seen what we've done. We've broken that fellowship just like Adam did. We've broken that fellowship. We've decided uh, to take it upon ourselves to do whatever it is we want to do. And God says, Where yet? I'll forgive you. I'm faithful and just to forgive you. I don't have no problem forgiving you, but you've got to confess to me what you've done. I want you to come to the fact with yourself, be honest with you, and tell me that you know that you're in the state that you're in so that I know that I can help you. What is it? They always say the first step to recovery is acknowledging where you're at. The first step of getting of getting healing from an addiction is to acknowledge and understand. Okay, I've got a problem. Amen. These guys that come into the jail, they'll come in. They can't even walk. They'll be so doped out of their mind, high on, on meth and everything else. Come in. Had a guy the other day come in. Said he done. He did meth that morning, nine o'clock in the morning. And one of the questions that I have to ask him is, do you have a drug or alcohol addiction problem? What is the, what is the answer that I get 100% of the time? No. Almost, I mean 100%. I, had, I maybe met one person that was honest and said, yeah, I messed up. Brother Joe, you know, I mean, you met them, you see them. They're, listen, God, what, these men, they come, they, when I worked at Walton County, they'd come in and preach. Sometimes they wouldn't get out the door good. They'd be in there fighting each other. Ten minutes before this, whew, baby. I told Brother Joe, I said, y'all can't come no more. I said, I taste two people on Sunday one time. I said, that ain't good, man. He's supposed to be tasting people on Sunday. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I mean, these guys, and sometimes, listen, and we're guilty too. We laugh at them. We're guilty. We'll come to church to preach or preach on sin and have something to say. And then, maybe you're not even preaching on sin, but he'll mention something that pricks your heart. And right off all, all the bat, no, oh, that ain't me. Preacher will say something about visitation. Preacher will say something about you singing in the choir. Preacher will say something about your attendance. And you'll say, oh no. Not me. I got mine under control. Preacher will say something about tithing. I got, I got me. Don't worry, preacher. Don't worry about me. That's what we're thinking. Sitting there the whole time. Don't worry about me. I got it. Don't he know I've been coming here for 20 years? Don't he know my daddy's a preacher? Don't he know my mom's singing the choir? I don't need nobody telling me how to be a Christian. Come on, Amen. It's real quiet. Man, thank you, son. <laughs> That's right. But man, we'll, we'll but, but until we can get to the point where we confess, 
truly confess our sin, that's, then, we'll, then we can get that forgiveness of our sin. What's the difference between the way we prayed the night we got saved and the, the way we pray now? I was praying with everything I had to get out of hell. Amen. Boy, I was telling him, I was telling him about the bubble gum I stole when I was a kid. Go on, brother. Lord God, please don't let me die and go to hell. I remember one time, Lord, I, I, I saw a five dollar bill on Granny's table. I took it, Lord. I took it. Forgive me. I mean, I was letting, I was letting it have it. But now we pray, Lord. Me again. <coughs> Light bill come in. I don't know how we're going to pay it. Lord, doctor bills come in. I need you to do it again, Lord. Lord, send me a good husband. Lord, send me a good wife. But we have yet to confess our sins and get to the bottom of that first. Exactly. Get that, let's get that figured out. Yeah. I'm guilty. I'm listen, I'm preaching to myself. So many times I've went to the Lord and prayed. Just like the other day when we was having this baby. And I went I went and got in the truck and prayed. And listen, I was more mad at myself, Brother Joe, because I had to get a bunch of junk out of the way first. I was upset with myself. I called, I called a bunch of men that I knew and asked them to pray. I called Brother Caleb Shirley and Brother Tim and all those men and asked them to pray. I don't know if y'all know Brother Gordon Barry. Called all these men asking to pray. And you know why? Because I felt good knowing that they were praying because I know their character. And I was ashamed of myself because I felt like I had a bunch of junk in the way. It really opened my eyes, Brother Joe, because it made me think, man, what if it was an emergency and one of my children or my family members needed, needed me to pray right then but I have to lay there and ask God to forgive me of a bunch of junk before I could ask Him to help my family. It's the truth, church. Yeah, we can pray. We can pray, we can pray, we can pray and ask God to do this and ask God to do that. But listen, if we're covered in sin, amen. We've got to be in a place where we're, where we're right with Him. There's a process to everything. Amen. There's a process to everything. Brother, Brother Todd don't just pull a truck in his shop and start pulling rent and, and wrenches out and just start taking bolts off the truck. If there's a, car, a truck that comes in and needs a new transmission, he's not going to pull the oil plug and let the oil drain. He's not going to put a brand new transmission in it and put motor oil in the transmission. There's a process. There's steps to take. And in our Christian life, most of us, I'm going to be honest with this. Not, I, listen, y'all ain't going to like this statement as much as I did. Listen, but most of us are still in step one. Of real, I'm talking about a real Christian, a real relationship with Christ. Myself included. You read some of these books, man. You read some of these books, Leonard Ravenhill. You hear, you, hear these, you hear these stories of these preachers like Percy Ray 
and the amazing things that they did with the power of God in them? You don't think they didn't confess their sins? The Welsh Revival? Do you think, listen, I read a book in high school about the Welsh Revival. And that was, the, that was the common thread through all of Brother Mike. Was don't never expect outward revival unless you've experienced an inward cleansing. Amen. Don't ever expect an outward revival unless you've experienced something on the inside. True confession of sin. Because until we get to that point where we confess our sins, and I mean really get down to it, we're not going to experience revival like we want to see it in this church. We want to see these pews full. That's great. I want to see it. We want to see these pews full. We want to see the choir full. We want to see God working through the choir. Amen. Amen. We want to see our Sunday school rooms full. We want to see the auditorium full yeah. on, on, on Sunday morning at 945. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I said it's not going, it's not going to happen until we get to the place, church, where we confess our sins. You say, well, I didn't come down here on Wednesday night to hear about this. That's fine. <coughs> I'll write to preach you a letter. Let him know how to Come on, wait, wait. <laughs> At the jail, we call them grievances. File a grievance. File you a formal grievance. Tell y'all like I told him. Just make sure you spell my name right. <laughs> Until we get to the place where we, I mean, really, daily, die to ourselves. We have to accept it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to adopt that practice every single day. We're confessing our sins. Confessing our sins. Confessing our sins. Confessing our sins. Me and my wife were talking the other day. If y'all are taking notes, that was your three points right there. We were talking the other day. She said, We've just been busy. I said, yep. It's been crazy. She said, I want us to get back to our routine of Bible reading like we used to. You know, she, she'll she she'll do things, you know, on her own. I'll do things on my own. You know, we'll read scripture throughout the day. But you know how you are. You know how it is. This happens. To, used to read together as a family, pray to, well, we still pray together every night. But we used to read scripture together. We'd go verse by verse, and try to, you know, go through them, study them out. But what happens? Time. Stuff. Stuff that we put in the way. I ain't going to say it gets in the way. We put it there. It gets in the way. We let it. Man, we got moved into our house. Brother Mike, we got this. We had a, a wall. Brother Joe, I showed you a picture. It was a fire, rock fireplace, all that stuff. Well, I tore all that out and put this nice ship left up there. It's pretty. First thing I thought, man, that TV's gonna look good. <laughs> Big old TV. I thought, man, that's gonna look good. 
My wife despises the television. Despises it. Hates it. She burn every one of them. She's like uh, Larry Brown from out there and where Idaho or wherever he's from. Smash them on the stage. She she hates them. The other night, I fought with that. Listen, I put it up, hung it up, mounted it, hid the wires. Looks good. Bought an antenna because we can't afford cable. Bought me an antenna, hooked it up Monday night football. Some might say, man, I fought with that stupid thing for two hours trying to get it to come in. Just right. I'm out there on the porch turning the antenna. I felt like I was a kid again. <laughs> my, when my dad used to holler at me, all right, I'd feel him banging on the side of the trailer when I got it to that. I'm talking about that one that was up there. I'm out there like this. Yeah. Then I'd hear dad hit the side of the trailer. Boom! I'm like, all right, here we go. We're on the right spot. She knows it's true. <laughs> that, that antenna's still up. <laughs> Man, but I fought with that antenna. I fought with it. I fought with it. The whole time I'm thinking, she's in there praying to God. <laughs> This thing don't work. <laughs> I've got a probably a, what would you say diesel is? 90 pounds? I've got a 90 pound seven month old mastiff. Alright. He's huge. I get it on the right channel. He chews the antenna cord in half. <laughs> I find it laying out in the yard. Alright, so this is just it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not gonna get to watch TV. Oh, I so we can just take it down and hang a nice picture up there. I said people don't just sit and look at pictures of us. <laughs> of all of the things. They're not gonna just all. <laughs> This is just God, the Lord speaking to me. I'm not preaching against TV. I thought to me, what if you'd have fought so hard for y'all to sit and read your Bible that night? What if you'd have fought, fought that hard over your Bible for your son to understand what it says and put that much effort into him understanding Bible stories as you did that stupid TV? Amen, bro. And that's on me. Listen, I'll go and sit for hours. Hours. Covered in ants and mosquitoes in a tree stand. Hot. <coughs> Waiting on a deer to walk by that might, may or may not be coming. My luck, probably not. I'll sit 30 foot up in a pine tree covered in paint waiting on a deer to come by. And I get frustrated sometimes when I feel like church is going to. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Why are you saying all this? Because I'm confessing. Amen. Right. So I wouldn't tell everybody that. It's okay. How about we got the inward things, the spiritual things. <clears throat> we have that. We need to confess those things that we have on the inside of our heart. The things that we think. The things that we want to say but we don't. Because yeah. that's that's sin too. Amen. What about them outward things? I'm almost done. What about them outward things? 
and the things we do say, the way we look at somebody. And that time you honk the horn at somebody, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll let them have it. I'll let them have it. Little do I know sometimes that might be somebody's 90 year old mother trying to get home and ain't got no right, ain't got no way to get nowhere. Yeah. She's just trying to get home from the doctor, scared to death. She didn't even want to get up and go in the first place. <laughs> Nobody would take her. I just scared her to death. She didn't make that turn quick enough. What about what about the way we talk to our spouse? Come on. What about them little snarky things that we say, Mom? What about them little snarky things? Them little cuts that we take, don't we don't we think they don't mean nothing, and then we'll normally follow it up by what? I was kidding. Amen. 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 I had a preacher sit down and tell me when we was counseling before we got married. He said, "I don't care how many times you say you was kidding, there's always a little bit of truth in what you said. Be Amen. careful." Because you'll never take it back. And be careful because once you say it, that seed's been planted. Amen. The seed's been planted. And listen to me, men. Y'all know what I'm about to say. Y'all going to agree with me. It don't matter if it was just a, just a small undertone of something you felt like you wanted to say. <laughs> An hour or a couple, couple days later, she's going to bring it up. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna bring it up. She's gonna say, she's gonna say, Would you, uh, you do your own laundry since you think I do it. When all you said was, all you said was, man, I can't never find those socks in this house. Dryer must be eating my socks. Yep. Right? Come on, please. Then a couple of days later, you'll come home. And there'll be 800 socks that she bought and threw them on the bed and said, there's your socks. I don't want to hear you say no more about socks. Amen. <laughs> better watch it, Brother Joe. <laughs> That'd be one of them things right there. I thought you weren't scared. <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to shift gears here. We say them, that we say them little bitty things. We'll throw them out there. Oh, I was just kidding. You know better than that. You know I wouldn't say that to you. I love you. I wouldn't talk to you that way. What about the times when you're serious? Yeah. And you do mean to hurt. You cut down. And that's the one that God gave us. Men and women. That the Lord gave to each other. To have, to hold. Till death do we part. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In my case, for poor and even poorer. <laughs> Bo said today, he looked at this house, he said, Daddy, that's a whole house. I don't like it. Because <laughs> he said, Yeah, we, she said, You're like Mama, you like them shiny new things. I said, Well, y'all y'all got hooked up with the wrong one. Because <laughs> you like them shiny new things. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all both got the bad end of that deal. Well, sometimes, don't we? Husbands, wives, don't we say those things? Oh, yeah. What about, 
What about the things we say to our kids? Mm -hmm. oh, well, we say, well, I, you know, that's our, we love our kids. I'm just disciplined. No, sometimes we say a little something. Yeah. Sometimes we got a little bit of something on it. Sometimes we get mad. Amen. Well, you're not there, brother. We get mad. I must be the only one. Okay. If I was three years old, sometimes I could snatch him up. <laughs> I could snatch him up. <laughs> snatch his soul out of Put it back. Tell him. trying me lately. You've been trying me. Making me say a couple things over and over and over. And then he's got to where he does this thing now. I'll get on to him, he'll come hug me. That's what he's doing. I'll say, son! Yeah. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> teenagers in here to listen to things that you some take these glasses off so I can't see. <laughs> what about the things you say to your mom and dad? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, they ain't just a handful of y'all, so I'm just going to preach to you, amen. amen. About them times you get mad and slam that door. Mm -hmm. Or do that. God help his soul. <laughs> and her soul, if I ever hear, come from the back of that truck. <laughs> or that eye roll. I feel like Miss Cannon knows about that eye roll. <laughs> and ain't nobody looking, ain't nobody when you're in your room. Mom and Dad's giving that lecture again. I know, Dad. I know, Mom. Don't don't you think I heard you the first time? There's this comedian. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen because it's so true. He he he's it's a little thing he does, a little skit. He's acting like middle schoolers. It's hilarious. And it's so accurate. So accurate. Did you do your homework? Yeah. Most of it, yeah. Did you, you need to do all I'm going to. Told you. I'm turning this game off. He turned, man, he's. <sighs> Kids, he's in there. He's acting like he's a kid on his phone at night in there texting. Put your phone down. It's time to go to sleep. I will. Put it down. I will in like five minutes. Put it down. And then he goes, all right, I'm taking my belt off. And he says, what? I didn't do nothing. What? You know what you did? Throw that phone down. I just set it down and fell in my hand. That's right. How do I know? Because that was me. Amen. Most teenagers, and listen, I was the same way. You think your parents are so just untouched, out of touch. <laughs> you you failed to realize that we was one. I was, I were, we were, however you say it. You can tell I didn't do good at school. <clears throat> we were there. Teenagers. We didn't have cell phones. I didn't. We didn't have cell phones, we didn't have all that, but listen, we knew what it was like trying to get one over with mom and dad. But here's the important part of a teenager. Listen to me. This is important. If you want God to bless your life and give you the spouse and give you the home and give you the relationship that you want with God, it's going to take you confessing your sins yeah. every day. Yeah. Don't 
hide them, especially as a teenager. Don't hide them, even in your heart, because that'll mess up your mind. Amen. Because there's so many things that a teenager thinks of because of the hormones and all the crazy stuff that's going on and all the stuff you see at school on TV, social media, all that. Listen, there's so much. If you try to hide that, it'll mess you up. We got to get that junk out of there. Got to get it out of there. Amen. Amen. We got to confess our sins, church. Then, give me that verse one more time. There it is. Bob says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful every time, just every time, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness every single time. You used to pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I wanted to smack that man in the drive through Lord, I got mad back here at that red light. Lord, I did this. Lord, I did that. I wasn't doing it right. But instead I should have said, Lord, I'm angry and bitter. That's why I got mad at that guy at the drive through Lord, I don't have compassion like I should. That's why I honked that horn at that woman. See, it's easy to just say, oh, I lost my temper. Oh, well, you know, I just didn't feel like I ought to give that man some money. He was begging for some. When really, if we'd be honest, I don't have compassion and I don't care enough about him to stop and give him five dollars. Lord, that's my problem. Amen. It's not, oh, I didn't have time. I didn't have no change. It's, I didn't have enough compassion in me to stop and help somebody the Bible tells us to help. Come on. The least of these, my brethren. It's in there. Listen, when we get, you know, we get mad at mom and daddy, we get mad at our spouse, and we, and we snap off at them instead of saying, Lord, I'm bitter on the inside, I'm angry on the inside, I've got some problems, Lord. I confess that I'm angry. I confess that I've got problems. I confess that I've done this. Lord, I confess that I've done that. And Lord, would you please help me? I'm here because I need some help, Lord. That's when he gets real. Amen. Amen. It's not we throw these little bitty cover up prayers on top of it. These little bitty, oh Lord, you know, Lord, I got mad at a guy today, and Lord, I just, you know, I got angry and said some things I shouldn't have. I ask you forgive me. No, Lord, I'm an angry person. Please help me with my anger. Lord, I don't have compassion like I used to have. Lord, give it back to me. Lord, I don't have a burden for souls like I used to have. Not, not that, oh, I don't have time to go on visitation. Had to work too much. Had to do this. Had to do that. No, I don't have a burden for souls anymore. This week, because you know, we got all them bills coming in. I just, you know, I just didn't think we'd pay them. Instead, Lord, I don't care enough about your work and the furtherness, the, fur, the, the furthering of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care enough about it. Lord, it, it don't mean as much to me as it used to. Lord, I love my money too much. Lord, I'd rather have that brand new four wheeler down there at Bass Pro. That's when that's when he gets real. When you get real. Not oh, I couldn't find a check, Lord. Left my checks at home. You know who said that before? 
me. Paul will get it next week. <coughs> Do we normally get it next week? Let's be honest. No, we forget them too. Because next week it's double, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I just, you know, if I... <coughs> Come to the end. That's all. Stand head back.